coming up on OU Nightly, an attack on Campus Corner could be a hate crime. Hear what the victim is saying. Plus, good times at the State Fair. Will the weather cooperate? And new information about the second assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for watching OU Nightly. I'm Spencer Plato. And I'm Darby McCormick. We begin tonight with a night out on campus that turned violent. And leaves one man saying he's the victim of a hate crime. And Norman police say they are investigating it as one. OU Nightly's Chewy Dominguez is live on Campus Corner with the victim's story. Chewy. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm here on uh, Campus Corner where uh, uh, Harrison was laid down in the street for 30 minutes just crying for help. The incident began over Harrison's hips yarmulke, a symbol of his faith. But what followed, Hip says, was far more than a simple assault. It says to me, hey, can I try on your hat? And I said, no, you know, this, this is my hat. And then he tackles me to the ground, takes me to the ground, starts pounding my head on the concrete, pounding it, pounding it on, over and over again. You know, I, I, I. Norman police have confirmed they identified a suspect, but no arrests have been made. And they were just calling me dirty Jew the whole time, and I'm telling the cops this, and they say, they they say that there's no evidence. There's, they, they say it's just assault. That they're, they're not putting it down as a hate crime. They're trying to cover the whole thing up. And as the investigation continues, Harrison was left with uh, internal brain bleed, and he hopes to uh, and he hopes to share this story with others. That uh, just in terms of the police to be pressurized into uh, turning this assault into a hate crime. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you for that update, Chewy. The State Fair is happening right now, and OU90 meteorologist Chloe Arroyo is live at the fairgrounds. Chloe, how are you doing out there? Have you had any wacky food? Black, wacky food indeed. All the corn dogs and the lemonade in the world out here. It's a beautiful day. Hot temperatures, a little cooler than what we saw at the beginning of the semester, but of course we're reaching the 90s. Take a look at this across the metro. We're topping out at 89 in Norman and 90 degrees in Oklahoma City. Now same for across the state. You'll see a similar concept, maybe a little bit warmer there in western Oklahoma. So we'll continue to see these temperatures in the next few days as well. 90 degrees for the next couple of days. Keep that in mind. Now coming up here in a bit, we're going to talk a little bit more about these warmer temperatures when we'll see a cool down at the beginning of next week. But I'll also have the details on your game day forecast. In the meantime, I'm going to be hanging out out here with the whole crew and all of these fun people out here. Back to you guys at the studio. Thanks, Chloe. I hope you're staying hydrated out there. Norman City Council members are set to finally cast their votes in the heated arena debate. OU Knightley's Olivia Hayes joins us live from the newsroom. Olivia, one local activist group is already preparing for its next, local, next steps if the council votes in favor. Spencer Darby, Woman in Action for All Norman, says it wants to be ready if the city council votes in favor of the TIF. I spoke with the chair of the group about why it decided to ask for volunteers to train. I feel like it is mortgaging Norman's future. Woman in Action for All Norman is calling on the community to come together and bring the vote of a new arena back to the people. We said that we would help train the volunteers because we have done several petitions lately. Tomorrow night, the Norman City Council is hearing from residents and voting on if a new basketball arena and entertainment district will be built. This build would be funded solely by the public dollar through an arena TIF plan. This proposal would be the only one of its kind in the sense that it would be the only one not on campus, the only one paid for by public money yeah. um, and without a vote of the people too. You know, this TIF, after paying interest on this money for 25 years, will cost close to $600 million. We feel like something that large the people of Norman should have a vote on. If the arena proposal passes, Stock says Woman in Action for All Norman will hit the ground running to petition for a vote of the people. In Norman, Olivia Hayes, OU Nightly. 
That petition, Training for Women in Ad Action for All Norman, will take place at the well starting tonight at 6.30. Back to you. Thanks, Olivia. The City Council meeting tomorrow starts at 6.30. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you updates as it continues to develop. The suspect of the second assassination attempt of former President Donald Trump has been charged with gun crimes. Ryan Wesley Ruth was charged with two counts, possessing a firearm as a convicted felon and possessing a firearm with an obliterated serial number. Trump is safe and not harmed, according to his campaign. The acting Secret Service director says Trump was not in his, sight, uh, his line of sight at the time. The FBI is continuing to investigate the situation by interviewing witnesses and processing evidence. Life-threatening flooding strikes parts of coastal North Carolina. OU Knightley Savannah Simmons is following the state of emergency and other national headlines from the News Center. Yeah, Spencer Darby, Carolina Beach officials are urging residents to stay home as historic rainfall causes extreme flooding across the state. Meteorologists call this a once in a thousand year rainfall event. In 12 hours, the city received over eight inches of rain. The storm system could become Tropical Storm Helene with the extreme rainfall and gusty winds. In LaPorte, Texas, a liquefied natural gas pipeline catches on fire. This is prompting evacuations and street closures in the suburb of Houston. The company Energy Transfer says their 20 inch pipeline carrying natural gas liquids must burn itself out. The cause of the fire is under investigation. A firefighter was treated on the scene for minor injuries. Three federal judges are deciding on a law that would ban TikTok in the United States. Congress passed a bill last April that the president signed into law. The ban would go into effect in January, unless there's new TikTok ownership, the Chinese-owned company ByteDance is challenging the law, saying it violates free speech. About 150 million Americans use the app. And at the age of 70, Tito Jackson, one of the Jackson 5, passes away. Brother of Michael and Janet ja Jackson died from an ap apparent heart attack. Spencer Darby. Thanks, Savannah. When OU Nightly returns, good news for home buyers. What you should be looking out for. And it's an exciting weekend for OU football. Events you won't want to miss out on next. Time's nearly up for federal student loan borrowers to start paying them before taking a hit to their credit score. OU Nightly's Abby Hollinsworth is following this in today's Money Matters. The on-ramp President Joe Biden created to help the most financially vulnerable student loan borrowers is expiring at the end of this month. According to a recent Government Accountability Office report, 6.7 million borrowers are at least 90 days past due on their loans. While the on-ramp protected their credit scores for now, these borrowers will face damage to their credit scores past September 30th. The housing market is improving for buyers and sellers. Mortgage rates are falling. The standard 30-year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.2% for the week, according to a housing market manager website. That's a slight decrease from last week and a low not seen since February 2023. And more than 90% of businesses across the country are small. According to a recent study, researchers found the best counties to begin a new business. Logan County, about an hour north of Norman, has the highest income and tax returns in the state. McLean County takes second. Researchers say these counties are the best to start a new business as their small businesses are the strongest in the state. And a check on your gas prices this week. According to Gas Buddy, it's a penny extra at the pump for Oklahomans. Nationally, prices have fallen six cents per gallon. Darby, Spencer. Thanks, Abby. OU football's first SEC game just got more exciting. Some special guests are coming to the South Oval. OU Nightly reporter Abby Williams has the details on how you can attend the football festivities on Saturday. ESPN's College Game Day is coming to Norman for the first time since 2020. It's the first SEC matchup for the Sooners since joining the conference on July 1st when they welcomed Tennessee for a ranked conference matchup. Here's what you need to know about College Game Day's visit to the Palace this weekend. The last time OU hosted the College Game Day crew was back in 2020 when they beat OSU. But the Sooners have been on the show twice since then, both in Red River rivalry games. According to the NCAA, with this upcoming game, OU becomes the school with the fourth most appearances on the show, with 41. 
With all the hype around Saturday's game, most students are just hoping they can catch a ticket to this historic matchup. We have a pretty deep history with Josh Heupel and Tennessee there. So obviously it's the first SEC game that we're going to be playing in a new conference and they're a really great team. A lot of people are going to want to go, which is driving the price of the tickets. The cheapest tickets are going for around $200 on resale sites and the marketplace on campus isn't much better. They're sitting at around like $200, which I think is pretty ridiculous. Like a lot of the students are just, you get your tickets for cheap and the student season ticket thing and then you want to upsell them to other students. And as a student who doesn't have a lot of money going around and I find it kind of uh, upsetting that OU students are trying to rip other students off. If you're still looking for a ticket for the Sooners first SEC matchup, be prepared to pay a price. Reporting from Norman, Abby Williams, OU Nightly. Thanks, Abby. If you're lucky enough to get a cheap ticket, kickoff for the Sooners is at 6.30 p.m. A fierce legal battle is underway today that has been a year in the making. Coming up next, I'll have updates on the Murdoch Family Trust trial that has multiple parties up in arms. And we're not going anywhere anytime soon. We'll have the full forecast and more coming up next. Well, welcome back to OU Nightly. We are out here at the Oklahoma State Fair. There are people behind me. I've got my snacks. I've got the lemonade out here. The whole nine yards. Temperatures are beautiful out here. Perfect for the fair. Outdoor weather, not a cloud in the sky. Take a look at this on the right side of your screen. Say temperatures in the upper 80s, lower 90s across the metro. And if you zoom out across the state, the same thing applies, except on the, on the western portion of the state, we'll see a little bit on the warmer side. Guyman in the mid to upper 90s. We'll continue to see that. But here's a look at your dew points. Notice how there's a difference in our dew points uh, in central Oklahoma versus western portions of Oklahoma, especially on the panhandle. They see a little bit of a slight dry line, and that's what's giving them the chance for some isolated pop-up showers and storms. We're talking summer showers and storms, so maybe 20, 30 minutes at a time, and that won't affect central Oklahoma. So if you're coming out to the state fair as well, you won't need to worry about that one bit at all. Take a look at your state fair forecast. We'll see hourly temperatures into the 80s, and then we'll slowly bend down into the lower 80s, upper 70s throughout the night, throughout the evening. So if you're coming out here later in the evening, 8, 9 o'clock, You'll be a lot cooler out here than you are right now. But even then, it's really not that bad out here. We're having so much fun, having a great time out here. So take a look at this future track. So we're continuing to see those showers and pop up here and there in, uh, again, western Oklahoma. But that's not going to happen here. It'll fizzle out, and we're too dry over here for uh, central Oklahoma to see any of that. So, again, beautiful sunshine out here. We're going to continue to see that. So throughout your future cast, Wednesday morning is when we'll see the cloud coverage kind of pop in so when you wake up and go to class or work in the morning um, on Wednesday morning that's when you're going to start to see those temp or start to see the cloud excuse me um, cover as you uh, walk to class that morning so here's a look at your game day forecast we'll see uh, skies uh, partly cloudy in the morning and then we could see a slight isolated chance for a couple showers here and there throughout the halftime kickoff and or excuse me kick uh, tailgate kickoff half time quite the order right there and then for your seven day we'll see temperatures warming up into the 90s throughout the week your weekend's gonna look like 80s so a lot going on lots of warmer temperatures uh, looking a lot similar to the beginning of the semester but overall we're gonna start to see those temperatures cool down into the end or the excuse me the beginning of next week but in the meantime enjoy the beautiful temperatures and if you can, come out to the State Fair. You can see behind me people are having the best time. I'm having a great time out here. Probably going to go on one of those rides at some point. So back to you guys, ladies, or back to you ladies at the desk. Yeah, it sounds like you're having a great time out there, Chloe. Definitely hope I can make it this year to the fair. Thanks again. Well, today, media mogul Rupert Murdoch arrives at Reno, Nevada courtroom where a legal battle of his family trust takes place. These legal issues have been going on since 2023 when Murdoch petitioned a court to adjust the trust and give total control of it to his eldest son. His son is also chairman of Fox Corporation, which includes Fox News. Several media outlets filed a petition to have the proceedings unsealed because Nevada has special privacy laws. The judge denied the request. And it's a big week for OU football and men's basketball. 
Aiden, I hear that you have some info about a new face Sooner fans can expect to see play at the LNC. And coming up after the break, I'll explain why Porter Mosier's day got a whole lot better. And a surprising performance helped the Sooners escape another upset bid. Hear from the rising star and how it feels to break out on the big stage. I'll have it all next in sports. Hello, I'm Aiden Tyler and it's time for sports. The Oklahoma football team looked to ride the green wave on Saturday. Tulane, however, hoped to upset the Sooners who struggled with Houston last week. And it started off well for the Crimson and Cream as Jackson Arnold would open the scoring running this one in. It's 7-0 OU. And the game was changed when Billy Bowman notched his first interception of the season in the fourth corner. Fourth quarter, excuse me. And the Sooners would get the ball back late in the fourth. Jackson Arnold would have to go and improvise here with nobody open. Nothing but green grass ahead. Touchdown OU. It's 31-19. And late in the game, R. Mason Thomas completely took over. On the last two two-lane drives, he had a pass deflection and three sacks, including a strip sack that he recovered to seal the 34-19 win. Thomas says his defense was all smiles after the game. It's very, it's very fun. Like that's like you'll think like all these, you know, all these plays, all these, you know, meetings, all this practice, day to day, like everybody's like just on you and you may feel down or something. Like the, the coaches at the end of the day just having fun. If, if you're having fun, this is like you don't have no problems, and that's what we do doing. Some former Sooners also had fun this weekend in the NFL. Kyler Murray dominated the Rams with a perfect passer rating and three passing touchdowns, including this one here as the Cardinals got the win 41 to 10. Baker Mayfield and Tampa Bay faced off with the Lions, where the Heisman winner finished with two total touchdowns as he steered the Buccaneers ship to a massive win, 20-16. And a first in the career of Wanye Morris as the lineman scored a touchdown for the Chiefs. Just look at the big man celebration. KC wins it 26-25. Ramondre Stevenson would run in this touchdown to give his Patriots a late lead, but they would eventually fall in overtime to the Seahawks 23-20. And Austin Seibert drilled seven field goals, including this 30-yard game winner for the Commanders. OU women's soccer looked to weather the storm as they traveled to Tulsa. And Sophia Green started off early with a third-minute goal, third goal to put the Sooners ahead. And in the 10th, Ella Pappas would belt a screamer in, and it was enough for a 2-1 Sooner victory. And earlier today, Porter Moser got some good news. Four-star Andreas Holst, a seven-footer from Denmark, committed to OU men's hoops. Holst is ranked 54th nationally in the 2025 class. Spencer Darby. Thanks, Aiden. Lots to look forward to this week. Coming up on OU Nightly, hear how one foundation is gearing kids up for winter. How you can help kids bundle up. Coming up next. I'm Kelsey Speed with an update on the second assassination attempt on President Trump. FBI agents say through cellular data they were able to find the suspect, Ryan Wesley Ralph. They say he was sitting on the sixth hole of the Trump International Golf Course for 12 hours. White House officials say President Biden reached out to Trump but was not able to connect. Spencer Darby. Thanks, Kelsey. The Oklahoma City Public Schools Foundation is preparing students for winter with a campaign known as Coat a Kid. That's right. The partnership hopes to raise $130,000, which will go to students in need of winter coats. The foundation says Oklahoma City Public Schools has more than 34,000 students with 90% living at or below the poverty line. Those wanting to help can visit Coat a Kid website. And while we can all help out these kids get some winter coats for this winter season, we certainly don't need a coat anytime soon, according to the weather. Yes, let's check in one last time with OU Nightly meteorologist Chloe Arroyo. Chloe, I hope you're staying cool out there. Staying cool indeed, thanks to the lemonade. And I've even got a snack out here. It's almost dinner time, so I'm starting to get a little hungry out here. So let's take a look at your seven day forecast. Final check of this. We'll see temperatures warming up into the 90s for the next few days before we cool down into the 80s. Remember that slight chance for showers on game day, but aside from that, nothing to rain out your game, just maybe a little bit of relief on the weekend. Back to you guys. Thanks, Chloe. Definitely happy this weekend's game tonight game.
Yeah, it's going to be a lot cooler from what this game, what the past game against Tulane was. That's right. I'm really looking forward to it. a full day of fun for Sooner fans. Well, thank you for watching OU Nightly. I'm Darby McCormick. And I'm Spencer Plato. Be sure to watch OU Nightly live weekdays at 430. Good night.